If you have no finished objects or works in progress, you can't be on the show. I'm sorry, babes. Greetings, friends, from rainy, dreary Bushwick, Brooklyn. <laughs> I'm Kristen, also known as Woolen Vine, here on my YouTube channel where I chat about what I'm knitting, what I'm sewing, what I'm making, or whatever other crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down this week. And as always, I'm just so happy that you're here hanging out with me, chatting about all those wonderful and amazing things. I have quite a bit to share with you this week. Oh my goodness, I have, <laughs> I have two finished objects. I can't remember the last time that that happened where I had two finished objects to show for. Anyway, I hope you're excited for that. Uh, so gather around, grab a cup of something, and, and let's get into things. If you follow me on Instagram, it might come as no surprise that I finished I finished my current mitch all. It is done and it is a beast, my friends. This is a pattern by Leslie Ann Robinson, who is also known as uh, Knit Graffiti on, on the interwebs and Ravelry and everywhere. And I just can't stop waxing poetic about how relaxing, how enjoyable, and how intuitive this project was to work on. And for the last time, because I'm sure you're all sick of me talking about it, the yarn that I'm using is Wool and Vine Yarns, my hand dyed yarn company, in three different colorways. So we have, da da da, um, we have Rosewater, which I started off with, and then it uh, blends into History Bound, which is this um, beige slash uh, neutral speckled colorway, uh, which then uh, transitions into Blood Moon, which is this um, shaded solid. It's a um, like blood orange rust colorway, which I am absolutely obsessed with these days. So yeah, um, and as I promised, uh, once I finished the shawl, I would offer these colorways on the on my new Vaux base again in my shop. Um, so while I am taking some much needed time off this week, I won't be having a shop update, but I will be back the following week. I'll be back with another shop update on Friday, May 14th, uh, where you can pick up these colorways if you want to knit one of these yourself or something else in this color combo. So yeah, there, there she is in all her glory. I thought I was in it for the long haul until I started playing yarn chicken with the rosewater colorway. I got up to about here and I realized I am really batting a thousand now uh, and I was wondering if I'm gonna have enough to do another repeat. Um, yeah, so anyway, I, I checked the pattern and I realized like once I got to about, about this point right here, I realized I was pretty much done with the shawl and I was like, wait, that can't be. I didn't, I couldn't believe it. I was like, is this long enough? But sure enough, you know, once this they blocks out. It's it's quite long. It's very, very, very long. And yeah, I'll put it on so you can see. It's like the perfect length. It's the perfect uh, width. It's just, it's, oh, this is just going to be like the best summer shawl that I can just chuck on for chilly nights. And oh, it's everything and so much more, guys. I love this shawl so much. But yes, I fought the yarn chicken and I won. I won. I won. And not only is it a shawl, but I love that it can double as a scarf for the winter. I mean, you can wear it any which way you want to. I mean, you can, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. I mean, if I was still working my nine to five in an office, I would be living in this thing uh, because, you know, in office environments, you know how much they crank that AC during summer months. Am I right? Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> um, you know, if you, if you do work in an office, highly recommend this pattern. Um, and even though in the last episode I mentioned that this became somewhat of a slog, I didn't mean that in a negative way, but I do as a knitter, knowing myself as a knitter, I have a threshold where I reach a point of knitting on a project for so long that um, I'm just ready to move on to the next new and shiny. I'm, I was ready to get this off the needles um, and wear it and enjoy it. But I will say, I will say, binge watching Bridgerton on Netflix really helped me power through the last bits of this shawl. Um, by the way, if you guys have not watched that show, oh my goodness, I am so hooked. Um, if you're not familiar with Bridgerton, it's actually based on a romance novel series by Julia Quinn. And if you guys know me, I love me, I love me a good romance novel. Um, now it's not, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea because, um, you know, it does get a bit risque, but if you love romance and historical drama, you're, you're going to love this show. Trust me on this. I think I only have one more episode left before I'm completely done with season one. So in order to tide myself over, I'm going to start listening to the book series from the very beginning, uh, the audiobook series, which, um, is actually a great way to mention this week's sponsor, Chirp. 
If you're a longtime viewer of this channel, you know that pairing knitting projects with audiobooks is one of my favorite ways to unwind or power through endless miles of stockinette. Am I right? And if you power through audiobooks as quickly as I do, you'll get the best deals through Chirp. Chirp is an online audiobook store that lets you get amazing limited time deals on select digital audiobooks. The books are yours to keep, and unlike many other audiobook services, there's no monthly subscription fees or minimum purchases. I love Chirp because it's easy to use and browse and offers hundreds of audiobook deals to choose from up to 95% off. While I mentioned that I'm going to binge listen to the Bridgerton series, starting with The Duke and I, by Julia Quinn, I could not resist downloading The Wharton Gothics, a collection of short stories of the unnatural and supernatural by Edith Wharton for 99 cents. That said, Chirp is offering my viewers, that's you, a discount for 50% off your first download. Just click on the link in the description box below and enter a code VOLANVINEYARNS50 at checkout. A big thanks to Chirp for sponsoring my channel, and to you guys, you're welcome and happy listening. It's a little bittersweet being finished with it, but you know, on to the next new shiny object, am I right? <laughs> um, and if you follow me on Instagram, I did post some finished object photos. Uh, last week I mentioned that I set up a photography studio down in the dye dungeon, uh, so I've been having a lot of fun with that. <laughs> and um, I, got, I got a seamless backdrop, uh, and I've been playing around with um, speed lights, and you know, dare I say, I, I threw in a, an electric fan for good measure. If, if Pro tip, pro tip, if, if you want to up your ante with finished object photos, put on an electric fan. It gives you that whole, you know, like Vogue effect, if that makes any sense. I will take any excuse to get dressed up these days, uh, so and I'm, I'm sure I'm not alone. Um, so yeah, uh, there you go, and I'm done. <laughs> The next finished object should come as no surprise, but I finished a pair of socks. Yay, they're done. My mauve rainbow, mauvey rainbow socks are done, uh, just in time for summer. So um, these will be waiting for me once the weather gets cooler again. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna say that I can't wait because frankly, I'm, I'm done with winter. I'm ready for warmer weather, but it's nice to know that there will be a fresh pair of hand knit socks waiting for me on the other side of, of the season. But yes, the yarn is Patton's Croy, which I shamelessly purchased from Amazon uh, in their brown rose colorway. I believe that's what it's called, if my memory serves me right. Um, but it's just this gloriously self-striping movie rainbow. It makes my heart sing and yeah, just a plain pair of basic six socks, knit cuff down, one by one rib, and then uh, fish lips kiss heel, and a basic grafted toe. So using Kitchener Stitch. I really, truly, truly enjoy working with Patton's Croy socks. It's great budget yarn, and my gosh, these are sturdy. I mean, uh, durable, they're like, you can throw these in the washing machine, the tumble dryer, and these will not die. I mean, they just last and last and last. Um, I have a pair that I knit maybe like over 10 years ago. I still wear them. I've tossed them in the laundry and the dryer and they have not shrunk. So um, yeah, highly recommend this yarn. Moving along to works in progress. Yeah, works in progress. Let's let's talk about works in progress, shall we? Um, so yes, a new cast on has commenced. Uh, however, it's it's more of a failure to launch <laughs> because um, if you recall in previous episodes, I wax poetic about casting on the Amarel, a pattern by Gabrielle Knits. It's a beautiful cardigan with an intricate lace yoke and oh my goodness, bubbles galore. I mean, I I fell in love with this cardigan when I saw it. And the yarn that I had in mind for it. Let's see. It's up here. Da, da, da. Okay. Um, I actually purchased uh, this yarn from Webb's, uh, America's Yarn Store, uh, and it is Cloudborn Highland DK in their charcoal heather colorway, and it's 100% Highland wool. So I will show you a close up of it. There you go. It's very scrummy, very lovely. So as soon as I was done blocking, photographing, and getting my uh, current mood shawl up onto Ravelry, I immediately cast it on, and, and here's where I am with it. Yeah. Again, nothing much to write home about, but can you see what's happening in, in this uh, cast on? Um, yeah, lots and lots of bobbleness happening. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I've, I can knit a bobble. I cast this on, I want to say, early afternoon yesterday, which was Tuesday. It is now Wednesday, um, late afternoon, and I'm not even up to row 10 on the lace chart. Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's taking me quite some time. Bobble after bobble after bobble. I was like, this is, 
this is not really what I signed up for. <laughs> so um, I kept starting and stopping and, you know, thinking about quitting and, you know, part of me is like, just suck it up. You can do it. And the more I just knit on it and knit on it, the more frustrated and, you know, impatient I became. And once, once the swear word started emerging from my mouth, <laughs> I knew, I knew then it was time to just stop. Put down, put down the cardigan, Kristen. Put down the ducky. I know I'm being a little over dramatic, just for, just for effect and uh, and humor, if you will. But, uh, yeah, I I realize that maybe this is not the pattern for me, and that's completely okay. Um, you know, it's a lovely cardigan. It's a beautiful pattern. It's very well written, but the process the process I'm just not enjoying. And as with all patterns, your mileage may vary. Just for me, as a knitter, it's not my jam. So I've decided it's hitting the frog pond and I'm just gonna cast on something a little more chill, if that makes any sense. So, uh, yeah, a little tale of woe, but you know, that's where we are with it. Um, but that leaves me, that leaves me with no project to work on. The other pattern that I was thinking about casting on was the stone cropped cardigan or pullover by Andrea Mowry, but if you are familiar with that pattern, Bubbles, lots and lots of bubbles. It's not, it's not happening. And I know the bubbles are optional on that pattern, but at the same time, I feel like the bubbles make the pattern. It's what I like about the pattern, but yeah, I'm not so enamored with the pattern that I, I need to have it in my wardrobe. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe some time down the line, who knows. But right now I'm just kind of um, browsing Ravelry for something else to pick uh, pick my interest, strike my fancy, um, you know. And yeah, I, I do have a couple of other patterns on my radar. Uh, the first being The Widow's Kiss, a pattern by Thea Coleman. This is a pattern that I actually cast on a while ago, but I think because I made a mistake with the, the cast on and the ribbing, I <laughs> kind of let that fall to the wayside. I didn't feel like ripping back at the time and starting over. But I was watching Ellie from Skein Deer Knits and she just cast one on and I got very, very excited and, you know, remember that pattern and, you know, I, I think I'm, I'm ready. I might be ready to revisit it. The other pattern that I'm contemplating casting on is the Ranunculus Pullover, a pattern by uh, Midori Hirose. I think I'm probably butchering that name and I apologize, but it's a beautiful pullover pattern. I feel like everyone and their monkey's uncle has cast that pattern on, except this chick. Um, <laughs> I was watching uh, Selma from the Little Big Knits podcast, or uh, YouTube channel, and she's on her fourth. She knit four, four ranunculus pullovers. Um, so yeah, I kind of want to hop on that bandwagon um, because it is, again, it's a beautiful pullover. It's just has this gorgeous uh, yoke of different textures and lace stitches. Um, you know, yeah, again, uh, two patterns that I'm thinking about casting on. I just have to go stash diving and see what's what's around uh, and what's calling to me. And and I'll get back to you with, with my decision. Um, so yeah, and I believe that is all the creative content that I have to share with you this week, my friends. Thank you so much, as always, for hanging out with me. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. Welcome to my little corner of the interwebs. Uh, and if you haven't already, please feel free to like and subscribe down below. I put out a video for your viewing pleasure most weeks. <laughs> and until the next one, happy knitting, happy sewing, happy making, and I'll see you next time. Bye!